Democrats fail to extend the eviction moratorium, Ron DeSantis signs yet another executive order, and a black supremacist organization is telling you that white kids are not allowed or shouldn't be able to go to Ivy League schools. I'm William Hall and this is The William Hall Show. The William Hall Show is brought to you by the Second Amendment Jerky Company. This is a simple product that I really like. Fantastic beef jerky and a portion of every purchase goes to supporting your right to bear arms. The Second Amendment is in more danger now perhaps than ever in history. There are a ton of great ways to support the Second Amendment, but the most delicious way is to buy beef jerky from the Second Amendment Jerky Company. Plus, all orders ship free from 2ajerky.com. That is 2ajerky.com to support the Second. Eat delicious beef jerky and, of course, help support the William Hall Show. All right, so an Illinois superintendent is planning on handing out yellow badges based off of your vaccination status. Now, many of you may be thinking about this and saying, okay, why would they do this? What would be the point of this taking place? But really, this is about them trying to separate the people that have been vaccinated from the ones that are unvaccinated. So this is this uh, guy. He wrote in the statement that I'm showing up here on the video if you're watching that this way. But he's saying, I am willing to, uh, I'm writing to you today to make you aware of an option that is now available if you are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. We are or we have purchased ID badges that are yellow and are for and are for those who wish to be easily identified as having received their full vaccination. If you would like to change the ID from white to yellow, please present your proof of vaccination to the office. So he's going on. And like I said, this guy is legitimately making this claim, talking about these badges to to be a part of this vaccinated, this fully vaccinated club and this group that's sectioned off from everyone else. Now, Things have been changing recently over the past couple of weeks. If you've been paying attention to the news with these new variants and new statistics showing the people that are still uh, contracting COVID-19 right now. But this is a guy that's literally saying, you know what? We need to separate these people out because this is all about virtue signaling. It's all about trying to separate the people to say, oh, look at us. We're, we're this special group. And, and these people, they are a part of this. Now, if many of you, when you're hearing about this, these yellow badges, you're probably thinking to Nazi Germany, right? When uh, Jewish people were forced to wear the Star of David to show that they were Jewish. And this is, this is a tactic that's straight out of that to me. It, it's where you're trying to separate people and, and discriminate against people based off of different Things And in this particular situation, it's based off of your vaccination status. So the thing is that if Hitler was alive today and the coronavirus was a thing, he would be perfectly cool with this. In his society, this would be something that he would absolutely do to make sure that people were separated in a way so that everyone knew on the face of it whether you were vaccinated or unvaccinated. But the thing is, is that even if you're getting vaccinated at this point or have already, Right now, the CDC is already flipped on this issue. They're telling you, you need to wear a mask. I mean, that's changed. All of this has changed just very recently, by the way. So the thing is that also many people who got the vaccine did so with the understanding that the vaccine would allow them to live a free and fairly open life where they wouldn't need to go back under the mask mandate. But that's what we're seeing here. So what do you do? Where, where do we go from here? And that's really the problem is that requiring things like this when right now being vaccinated really in the eyes of the CDC, in the, in the eyes of what's happening in plenty of other blue states, doesn't really matter. It really doesn't, because ultimately, it's, I mean, you're still going to have to go back to wearing the mask. You're still going to have to go back to social distancing, to pretty much everything else that they had in place before. So this just shows that you can't comply or bargain your way out of tyranny. I, I mean, at the end of the day, the only way is to keep it from happening from the very beginning, because otherwise people like this will take hold and then they're going to try to do everything they can. And it's been demonstrated throughout history. If we actually look at that, especially when it, when the when we look at the comparison between now or this particular guy and Nazi Germany as well. But because of the whole masks and everything starting to take place at this point. You know, a few months ago, I mentioned there's going to be data that's going to come out later, maybe a few months, maybe a few years from now. Then we're going to look back and we're going to say, man, should we have done things a little bit differently? Or maybe we should have considered some other options as a result of this in 2020. And this new report showing that 1.6 billion disposable masks wound up in the ocean in 2020. 
That's a lot of mass. That's 1.6 billion mass. Now, I'm not somebody that's a, 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 a climate change person or trying to go along with that whole narrative, but but the fact is that it doesn't take a genius or it, really this is a non-political issue. This is not good for the environment at all. And yet, this is what took place. Now, that's apparently going to take 450 years to biodegrade. Because of the material of the mask. So this is according to these reports, some more information on this. More than 52 billion face masks, by the way, were produced during the course of the COVID pandemic last year. Researchers from Visual Capitalist found that 3% of the 52 billion disposable single-use masks produced the uh, produced to curb the COVID-19 pandemic were actually thrown or found their way into sea somehow. And that's crazy. That's a ton of masks. So these throwaway masks sent uh, uh, 5,500 metric tons of plastic into the oceans, which will take up 450 years, like I said before, to biodegrade. So this is not good for the environment. Yet, this is what they were requiring us to do for the longest period of time. I mean, would you? every company was starting to make masks. Everybody was uh, mass producing them. And if you've walked around the city uh, during the, the maybe a few months ago or so, then you walk around and you see masks on the floor. You see masks in bathrooms. All I mean, just all over the place. People... You can't stop people from being people. That's the problem. Is that people that litter normally also litter with masks. They also don't care. They're not disposing of them properly. They're also wearing them far too often and expecting them to still be effective. This is the problem with trying to flood the market with things like this. And and once again, we're going to continue to probably see the ramifications of not only masks, but other things as well over time. And this is just one of those things where, you know, the Democrats are going to be pretty silent on this issue. Let's be honest. You're probably not going to hear them talk about this as much as they want to talk about pollution and the environment and things like that. They're probably not going to bring up this story because they can't. They can't talk about this story. Not when they're the ones that right now are saying, hey, we're going to need you to go back to those masks. I mean, they've been using masks to virtue signal. That's what they've been doing over the past couple of years now. So how in the world are they going to come out and say, hey, this is actually kind of bad for the environment. Maybe we should stop this. Maybe we should think of the materials that we're using to make these out of. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Speaking of masks, though, Ron DeSantis has also signed an executive order giving parents the power to choose whether to mask their children at school. This is a big deal because if you remember last year, I mean, they basically canceled school. And then when kids were going to basically go back, all of a sudden, all of these states said, no, they, they must be required to wear a mask. It's for the teachers. It's for the other students. It's for this and that. Meanwhile, the statistics, once again, I had a video that was banned. It was actually a, a, a mother that was uh, railing against the school board saying, why in the world are you putting masks on our children at this point when they're not really at risk or high risk whatsoever for COVID-19, but yet that video gets completely banned. Why? Because YouTube doesn't want you to know that. But now data has shown that I was right. She was right. Everyone was right because we looked at the data then. But they have to wait till the CDC says it's okay for everyone to go along with it. So Ron DeSantis is really is just kind of solidifying this and saying, you know what, we're not going to allow this to happen. So the report goes here uh, saying that Ron DeSantis issued Executive Order 21-175. In response to several Florida school boards considering or implementing mask mandates in their schools after the Biden administration issued unscientific and inconsistent recommendations that school-aged children wear masks. The governor's office said in a statement on Friday, the Florida Department of Health will enter rulemaking in collaboration with the Florida Department of Education to protect parents' freedom to choose whether their children wear masks. Once again, this is a big deal because I also was watching Fauci. He's been mentioning this several times where he said, you know what, if a child is under the age of 12 or whatever, they must wear a mask. Well, it's highly recommended that they do so in his little accent because that's what Fauci's there to do. He's there to parrot the same thing that the CDC says. I mean, it maybe one second he's saying something else, another second he's saying something else altogether. Remember the two masks? I'm old enough to remember that. He literally said it's just common sense to wear more than one mask. So that doesn't surprise me in this situation. But once again, this is Ron DeSantis trying to say, we're not going to allow this to happen again. Because obviously we're, there are still liberal counties in Florida uh, and other places as well, like even in Texas, there's liberal cities and whatnot. So they're going to be the first ones that are going to try to start implementing these mandates. So Ron DeSantis is kind of putting his foot down there. So it goes on here. 
where he said at a press conference that the federal government has no right to tell parents that in order for their kids to attend school in person, they must be forced to wear a mask all day, every day. Many Florida school children have suffered under masking, uh, forced masking policies, and it is prudent to protect the ability for parents to make decisions regarding the wearing of masks by the children. Once again, and, and this is absolutely correct, because it isn't the school's job to be able to determine all of these things. You know, one of the things that I was actually just posting about on Gab uh, just today was that regardless of what left wing people like to say, I'm not responsible for your health, okay? Nobody is responsible for someone else's health, unless they're like literally taking care of you. That's not someone else's job. But everything that Democrats have been doing over the past year has been aimed at that, if you think about it. They're telling you, they're telling me that it is because you didn't wear a mask or because you didn't socially distance or because you didn't get vaccinated properly or the amount that they feel like you should or at all, that they are now compromised. They're blaming other people for their health. Once again, and, and they're saying that you're responsible. Oh, it's because it's because you guys didn't get vaccinated in time. It's because not enough of you didn't do it. That's why. So as a result, now we have to go back to mass because everyone should have gotten vaccinated. Meanwhile, that was not the promise that we were sold by the CDC. It's not the promise we were sold by anybody. They never told us that everybody or 100% of people needed to be vaccinated in order for it to be even remotely effective. And now what we're seeing is the exact opposite of that. So just a little bit uh, kind of finishing what Ron DeSantis was talking about here. He says, I think our fear is that seeing some of these of these uh, or those rumblings that there is an attempt that the federal at, from the federal level or even from these organizations to try and push the mandatory masking of school children. It should not be mandated. I know our legislature feels strongly about it, such that if you started to see a push from the feds or some of the local school districts, I know they're interested in coming in, even in a special session, to be able to provide protections for parents and kids who just want to breathe freely and don't want to be suffering under the masks during the school year. So, once again, Ron DeSantis has this correct, because a lot of other places are not doing this. Blue cities, blue states cannot wait to implement these things. Just watch. They, they will go right along with this as soon as they can. And that really kind of begs the question. All of this is Democrats' fault at this point. You know, re I remember last year when they wanted to blame all this on Trump. They said that it was Trump's fault that this virus was where it was at. It's, it's him that killed all these people and blah, blah, blah. Well, what's happening now? What, what are we seeing right now? We're seeing a failure from not only the White House, but all the way down the chain. I mean, the Democrats are in charge of everything. And this is also why I think a lot of people, including myself, didn't really like Trump's messaging around the vaccine. Like, I get it. And I, and I think a lot of people just don't understand this. They don't understand a lot of things about Trump, you know. Uh, but, but the truth is that Trump is a president that... He always, he's the type of person that is going to try and use whatever accomplishments he can get, and he's going to continuously push them as hard as possible, okay? That's what he's always done. And it doesn't, it's not about this vaccine in, in particular. It's about everything. It could have been about the border wall. It could have been about anything. But because the, the vaccine was uh, produced under, or while he was a president, while he implemented the Operation Warp Speed, he knew that the first thing the fake news media was going to try to do is to give Biden credit for the vaccine. So Trump said, well, I'm not going to allow that to happen. So I'm going to talk about the vaccine all the time. Of course, that was a misstep. He shouldn't have done that because the problem is that there's a lot of skepticism uh, when it comes down to the actual vaccine right now amongst a lot of people. A lot of people do not trust the science behind the vaccine and, and whatnot. So Trump having that kind of messaging to push on people was like, hey, that might not be a great idea. Maybe we should kind of steer in a different direction. And this is exactly why. Because it hasn't exactly worked the way that the CDC and everybody else promised that it would. Because there haven't been any long-term tests. Because of the fact of just the nature of COVID in, in general. And I said this last year. Guys, it's go COVID is never going to go away. That's a point that I think that a lot of people don't understand. For some reason, I, I think that a lot of Democrats think that this is just go going to just disappear one day. It's not going to disappear. And I'm still waiting for the left wing person to explain to me why COVID cases or sorry, uh, flu cases went almost to zero last year. OK, how does that work? Keep in mind, by the way, because, you know, I was studying numbers from the years past. I mean, there was anywhere between 50 to 80,000 people that died from the flu every year. All of a sudden, that number's near zero. 
Yeah, some something's up here, and we also have reports of the, I guess, the PCR test as well showing, well, it's not exactly able to identify between the, the flu and COVID all that well. So those are just some of the issues. But like I said before, this is a failure of Democrats entirely. They don't have anyone else to blame at this point, except themselves. And we can look very clearly at this because Democrats also failed to extend the eviction moratorium. Now, you might be asking what that is. And basically what it was is that there was a kind of a, a policy put in place from the federal level. They were saying, hey, look, you know what? Because of the lockdowns, because of the economy, because of the things that took place in the last year, no one's allowed to evict anybody from their home, apartment, or anything else that's behind on their payments, okay? Because a lot of people were out of work, uh, weren't able to work, or maybe some of those people were just taking advantage of the uh, massive unemployment <laughs> at the time. So they probably weren't paying their rent whatsoever either. But the thing is, is that it was keeping people from being evicted. Now, Democrats have failed. They have failed to actually extend that. And now, people are presumably probably going to start getting evicted already. Now, this was just from last, uh, just last week. So this was already pretty much taking place. So the Democrats don't have anyone to blame here. I mean, who, who are they going to blame? Oh, well, if we had control of the Senate, well, you guys basically have control of the Senate. If we had control of, of the House, well, uh, you have control of the House. You're, uh, Biden's in the White House. So what's the excuse? Here's AOC saying as much. Well, you know, I think there's a couple of, of issues here. First of all, you are absolutely correct in that the House and House leadership had the opportunity to vote to extend the moratorium. And there were many, and there was frankly a handful of conservative Democrats in the House that threatened to get on planes rather than hold this vote. And we have to um, really just call a spade a spade. We cannot, in good faith, blame the Republican Party when House Democrats have a majority. Now, there is something to be said for the fact that this court order came down on the White House a month ago and the White House waited until the day before the House adjourned to release a statement asking on Congress to extend the moratorium. This came after weeks. I sit on the Financial Services Committee, which has jurisdiction over housing. We had, you know, the, the housing secretary there asking about the administration's stance. Uh, we asked the Biden administration about their stance, and they were not being really forthright about that advocacy and that request until the day before the House adjourned. And so the House was put into a, I believe, a, a needlessly difficult situation. Um, and it's not just me saying that. Uh, Financial Services Chairwoman, uh, Chairwoman Maxine Waters has made that very clear as well. And so there's a couple of contributing factors here. We have governors who are also not getting this emergency rental assistance out in time, which is forcing this this extension, what we would like an extension of the moratorium. The fact of the matter is, is that the problem is here. The House should reconvene and call this vote and extend the moratorium. The thing is right now is that all of the blue states are ready to shut down again. I mean, they, they haven't announced it yet, but keep a close eye on what's going on, folks, because once again, this Delta variant is going to be used to Clamp down even further, which, by the way, just some quick notes on the Delta variant before I kind of go on from this is just that keep in mind, this is a is going to by nature of the way that viruses mutate, not going to be as effective. It'll be more infectious, but it won't be as dangerous as the initial COVID virus. That's how these variations go. So it, that I mean, there's, that's the only way that we can really look at this at this point. But they're going to use this regardless. Even so. So what we're really going to actually see is the cases are going to go up really high. But deaths are not going to rise in tandem with those, okay? Because it's going to be less deadly, uh, just by, by the nature of mutation. So, but they're going to use that regardless. And they're going to focus on what's going to give them the validation to shut down states, to shut down businesses again, to implement mask mandates and whatever they need to do all over again. And they're going to probably focus on case count. They're probably going to ignore the deaths. So watch out for that on the news as well. But th th this is the problem that Democrats have created themselves. It's one that they could have fixed, but they didn't. Now, I don't think that they there should have been an eviction moratorium. Anyways, my thought is open up the states, open up the schools, shut off the unemployment, get people back into work, force them back into work so that we can go back to where we were. But as a result of that, this is what's happening right now. So, by the way, who is this affecting? About 6 million Americans, by the way are faced with homelessness at this point because they didn't fit, they didn't extend this. So right now, there are 2 million homeowners that are behind on mortgages and 6 million renters that are behind on rent payments. All because maybe some of them are lazy, maybe, maybe it's because some of them are just collecting unemployment and they don't care. A lot of it might also be because of the fact that 
there's no jobs available or the economy is really not that great. It hasn't recovered as well as it should have. Maybe they don't have an incentive to work because the government hasn't created an incentive to work. Maybe they're waiting on that next stimulus check. It's hard to really say, but the point is, is that these are people that are, are actually going to be affected by this. Meanwhile, what are the Democrats going to do? Tell you to lock down again? Tell you to close your business again? Meanwhile, they can't even extend this moratorium as it is? It, it's their it's it's their own problems. They, they created the problem. They're trying to go back into more problems. Meanwhile, this is an issue they still haven't fixed. So, not I mean, it's just another issue where Democrats have failed miserably. And a lot of people don't realize this. So, by the way, Nancy Pelosi's home. A bunch of protesters actually showed up there and uh, taped an eviction notice to her door as well as a result of this. Because even normal people realize that this was a failure from the Democrats. That's who this is. There's no reason trying to tape that on a Republican's door because... They're not the ones responsible for this. It could have gotten passed, and they didn't. They didn't do anything about it. So about 40 activists arrived at uh, Pelosi's San Francisco home on Saturday, just hours before the moratorium's last extension uh, expired, leaving more than 2 million Americans facing the prospect of being told to leave their home. And a bunch of people went there to protest and, you know, just tape an eviction notice to your door and say, hey, look, this is how it feels. This is what could happen to us. So, you know, once again... Is it because of just unemployment? They're just collecting that? Or is it because of laziness? It's hard to really exactly say. But it's still a problem that was created by Democrats that's continuing to be the case by Democrats. And if they ever want to tell people what to do for this Delta variant, they're going to have to fix stuff like this as well. It's just a kind of a circular problem that they can never get themselves out of. Today's show is also sponsored by Gab user Christian Resurgence. He wants to ask you, are you really born again or are you a Christian in name only? Are you trusting in Christ? The Bible says to examine yourself and see if you are in the faith. Do you seek to do all things to the glory of God or are you living for someone or for yourself and occasionally making mention of the name Jesus? Are you comparing yourself to Christ or to others who claim to be Christians even though they live contrary to the teachings of Jesus? Scripture says, they profess to know God, but in works they deny Him. Since you've professed Christ, have your thoughts and desires and lifestyle changed? The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. If your heart is still set on wickedness, if you act the same, still enjoy the same worldly pleasures, take the opinions of man over the authority of Scripture, don't have a desire to please God or pray and study the Bible, and aren't growing in grace, then you aren't born again. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Repent and obey Jesus, because the Bible says, Unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Everyone will spend an eternity either in heaven or the lake of fire, so seek the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. Trust in Christ alone. Once again, that's Christian Resurgence on Gab. Great person to follow as well. They have a bunch of great insight to the Bible as well. A Minnesota student was told to hide an equity survey uh, that was done with a few questions from their parents. Here's a little bit of the explanation of what took place. My name is Haley Asgar. I was in fourth grade at Riverview Intermediate School last year. During distance learning, I was asked to complete that equity survey. My teacher said that I could not skip any questions even when I didn't understand. One question asked us what gender file we identified with. I was very confused along with a lot of other classmates. A boy in my class asked my teacher if his mom could explain the question to him because even after the teacher explained it, he still didn't understand. My teacher told him that he was not allowed to ask his mom and that we could not repeat any of the questions to his parents. I want the school board to know how uncomfortable and nervous this made me. My mom always tells me I can tell her anything, but she also tells me I can trust my teachers too. Being asked to hide this from my mom made me feel very uncomfortable. I was doing like I was doing something wrong. Thank you. Remember this whole CRT thing. This is literally teaching children that America is racist from the very beginning, from the uh, history, laws, to the institutions, everything is inherently racist, always has been racist, and to what they really kind of are wanting it to always be racist is what it seems. So the thing is, is that I've called this out before, I mean, a thousand times I've talked about CRT, so I'm not going to go crazy talking about it here, but the thing is, once once again, these people say CRT is just accurate history, that's what it is. You, you Republicans don't want us to teach facts. Okay, well, if they're factual, if everything you're saying is the truth, why are you trying to hide it from parents? 
I mean, there's literally right now people, these uh, Democrats on Twitter, that literally believe that this is only being taught in uh, high, or uh, higher education, in college. But that's not true. This is, you're seeing this girl right here talking about this. They ignore these people over and over again. And when they do acknowledge them, they say, well, it's only these white parents that really are the ones that don't like it. Meanwhile, there's black parents that have spoken up and talked against this stuff as well. The thing is that children don't inherently see color the way that a lot of other people do. And they need to be taught to see it. And that's what the problem is with this stuff is that they are being taught to see it. They're being taught to notice some difference between them and someone else. Politics don't belong in schools, at least in the sense of these modern day social issues that they're trying to convey on these students. They're there to be educated, not to be indoctrinated. But we're seeing the opposite take place. And that's a major, major issue. But speaking of CRT and the schools, this black supremacist organization is now demanding that white liberals pledge to not send their students to Ivy League schools. I'm not kidding. I mean, I thought this was a Babylon Bee article. This this reads like an absolute joke, but it's not. I promise you. So this is a uh, organization called Dallas Justice Now, and it's a Texas based black supremacist group that are demanding white Americans pledge to never send Ivy League schools uh, or never attend Ivy League schools and any other top school in the United States and instead amend centuries of institutional racism by reserving spots in elite institutions for minorities. Okay, it gets it gets just crazier. So they go on to say, we are writing to you because we understand you are white and live within the Highland Park Independent School District and thus benefit from enormous privileges taken at the expense of communities of color. The racial activist group states, you live in the whitest and wealthiest neighborhood in Dallas, whether you know it or not, you earned or inherited your money through oppressing people of color. Now, this is why I, I hate this stuff, because what proof do they have of any of that? I mean, show me where you have one speck of evidence to show that they got rich on the backs of you. They can't do that. They can't do it. And, and by the way, if there's any, you know, richer black people in the area, they'll just completely ignore them. But how in the world can you make this statement and just assume that that's what's actually the truth? You have no proof of that whatsoever. You're just assuming. So the thing is that they're going to say, we're asking you to pledge that your children will not apply or attend any Ivy League school or U.S. News or World uh, World Report Top 50 school. If you do not have children under 18, then we ask you to pledge to hold your white privileged friends, family, and neighbors with children to this standard. What, What standard? I mean, it sounds like discrimination to me, but they go on to say these schools have afforded white families for generations. Having your children attend these schools takes away spaces from students of color who really need the job opportunities, education, and influence that these schools provide. Here's the problem. There's so many issues with this, but first of all, what about all of these historically black colleges? I mean, come on, guys. You, You have these schools that are exclusively for black people and you completely ignore them? Why aren't those top schools? Oh, could it could it be that maybe just the students aren't to that level? Maybe that's why. I mean, they're acting like Ivy League schools are white only schools, but that's false. That's an absolute lie. So when you look at this information, when you're talking to these people and you're reading what they're saying, they can't help but to misrepresent the facts of the situation. Fact number one. Affirmative action exists. Okay, I don't know if these people have never heard of that, but already at Harvard and Yale and every major Ivy League school out there, if you are black, you literally just have to score a lower score on the SAT. I mean, that's plain and simply what it is. They don't care about your economic status or not. If you are black, you do not have to work as hard to get into those colleges. That's the way it is right now. Now, granted, you still need to be fairly smart, but I mean, come on. What they're basically saying is, oh, well, because they're being afforded an opportunity, we must automatically be being denied an opportunity. As if they're literally saying, okay, here's a black student and a white student that both have a high uh, level of success in education. So we're just going to pick the white student because we just don't have space for black people here. The fact is that for years, if you are smart, black and poor, you can get any full ride you want to any school that you want. That's always been the case. That was the case when I was looking at going to college. I mean, for uh, that's the way that all the the loans and and the and the grants were all aimed at is, is people that were smart and low income. 
And yet they're telling you that, oh, it's only because you're, you've taken a spot away from a black person that you're able to send your kid to this school. And that's just not true. <laughs> they, they have no actual proof of that, especially when you look at affirmative action. But the thing is, is notice how these people are never focused on trying to better their own community. They're entirely focused, by the way, on blaming others for it. They're saying, you know what, we're perfect in every way. We have no problems to fix. We, you know, we don't need to invest in our own education. But those other people out there, those white people that have all of these, all of these privileges, they are the problem. They're the ones we can point to and blame. Because if only they just were to give up their spots for us, we would be able to achieve those same things. They think literally being in an Ivy League school just makes you smart. That's not true. By the way, there's plenty of evidence showing that students that were accepted into colleges based off of the affirmative action uh, rule set, basically to allow them to get in a lot easier than somebody that was of a different race uh, that had to achieve, by the way, a higher score. They've already shown and proved that those students perform terribly at the college or drop out at a very high rate. So you can get accepted, but what what is going to keep them there? I mean, clearly the problem is, is that it's not just about the school. It's about your aptitude, your ability to actually do well when you get there. That's what they're looking at. That's why they require those things. It's not about a feel good thing. It's like giving somebody the job of CEO when they have no experience of being a CEO whatsoever. They've never been there. They've never worked in any in a company or anything else. They have no experience whatsoever to go off of. But they feel good that they're there. Okay? But they're going to probably do a pretty bad job. And the company's going to fail, most likely, as a result of that. So why would you put them in that position? That's the problem with these ideologies, with these people that think about this, or think this way. They assume that just because the school is mostly white, that somehow it's automatically discriminating against them. Meanwhile, never looking and saying, you know what, maybe we need to improve the education. Maybe, maybe we need to make education more important in the black community and, and, and lift the black community up instead of trying to bring everybody else down. That's the big difference. All right, so this episode's TikTok liberal is a supposed science teacher basically trying to explain gender. This is an easy one. We say that there are more than two genders because there are more than two genders. Like a lot more. Remember, gender is a social construct. It's a set of behaviors that we consider appropriate culturally for different sexes. It's something that changes from generation to generation, if not from person to person. But even if you want to just pin that down on biological sex, that's not a binary either. You can't just say you're either XX or XY. There's a lot of variation there. There's XXY, there's X nothing, there's Y nothing. But even if you want to write that off and say those people are just statistical outliers, even if I grant you that, they're still people. So who are you to tell them what they are? Plus, remember, chromosomes are made of genes, like the genes that give you the hormones, give you the body that you have. But those hormones don't do anything unless they have the right cell receptors to bind to, which are controlled by a totally different set of genes. So you have two long gene pathways, both of which are subject to variation. The point is, it's just easier to admit that gender is a spectrum, rather than trying to cram 8 billion people down into two boxes. So first of all, this guy is starting out on a losing premises, to be honest, because he's starting off with the whole social construct idea. I'm so tired of hearing social construct, social construct. They say it over and over again for so many things. But this is what gets them in this trap that they cannot get themselves out of. Because the thing is that what this guy is talking about is saying, well, there's factually just more than two genders because of these, the XXY chromosomes. Oh yeah, by the way, XXY, that's a syndrome, like that's an actual scientific like anomaly that's a that's diagnosed as such not its own gender that's not what that is doesn't have a name it's a syndrome like it's, it's there's a problem there and it's only a problem because you have to accept and understand the actual biological fact that there's only male and female that are supposed to be the case but the thing is, is that these guys, the people on the left, they're never talking about these anomalies that like are legitimately intersex or something. They're not talking about the, the, the 0.0001 people that are born that way. They're literally telling you that a man can choose to be a woman at any given point in his life. They're telling you that Bruce Jenner is a woman. That's what they're telling you. I mean, by the same logic, I could go on the same kind of rant and basically say, you know, uh, people... That have 10 fingers saying that 10 people or people should have 10 fingers is crazy. There's plenty of people with nine fingers. So, or, or maybe even five fingers. So, you know, 10 fingers is a social construct. Do you see how stupid that is? Because it doesn't make any sense. Like the point is, is that you're supposed to have 10 fingers. It doesn't matter whether some guy 
maybe was born without tin or somebody had theirs cut off or lost it in an accident or something. That's not the point. The point is that you're supposed to have tin. It doesn't matter about this whole social construct thing. Facts are facts. Biology is biology. Science is science. And this guy that's apparently a science teacher telling you otherwise isn't going to change that fact. The thing, too, is that when you look at these people and they want to say, well, there's all these, it's, a, it's just a social construct. Because what they're doing is they're weakening the, the emphasis on male and female, the importance of those two things. And they're saying that there's really actually no difference. It's something that we made up. We just entirely made it up out of the blue. So, therefore, these names that we attribute men and women don't matter. That's what they're trying to do. It's basically to say it's this free and open scale and you can do whatever you want to do within this range of things. Meanwhile... They're the same people that are arguing, talking about there's some gender pay gap with women, which obviously doesn't exist if you just look at the statistics. But how in the world can you advocate for that on the one hand and then also say that it's just a social construct? You can't be a feminist and go along with this because the whole idea of being a feminist is basically admitting that there's only male and female, that there's a difference between men and women and women need this and that and whatever. So you can't just get rid of that entire idea and then also be a feminist at the same time because you're telling people that it's a social construct that's made up. There's nothing there. So that's why it never really makes any sense to me. You can't have it both ways. No matter how much Democrats want to try to do that, it never will work. It never will work. Both for women, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So either way, that's all I have for you on this show. I thank you for watching or listening to this one. I'm William Hall, and this is The William Hall Show.